Well, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, clap your hands. Amen. If you know this is the day the Lord has made and you've made up in your mind you're going to rejoice and be glad in this day, come on, clap your hands, everybody. Give God praise for another day. In spite of all that's going on around us, uh, we are tremendously blessed. Amen. By God, God has truly blessed us. I like to say it like this. If you woke up this morning, that means you're blessed. Amen. If you woke up this morning, that means you are blessed. Amen. Blessed beyond measure. What does that mean, blessed beyond measure? It means that if you took out a ruler or a measuring stick or a measuring tape, you cannot, you would not be able to measure adequately all of your blessing. You can't even count on your blessing. Amen. So we're grateful this morning. I want everybody to be grateful, um, to exercise the gratefulness of God. Amen. <clears throat> On this day, of course, as always, as always, live and in living color here at WSTW, simply the word, uh, ministry, prayer ministry, amen, live broadcast here on this Tuesday morning. It is, yes, 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 always a terrific, tantalizing testimonial Tuesday morning. <clears throat> Praise the name. We may be able to get, amen, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, we, we, may, um, we may be able to get some testifying in this morning, amen. I pray that you woke up with testimonies on your mind and in your heart and in your spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm so excited, so excited to be with you today live and in living color. Simply the word is a church without walls. We are a global community of prayer warriors and we are making a mighty impact on this whole wide nation. That's right. That's right. Been doing it. Amen. Just a little, uh, just a few months shy of 10 years. My God, my God. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Just in a few short months, we will be hitting a milestone, a great milestone in our ministry. 10 years. We'll be celebrating 10 years of impacting the world by way of prayer. Thank God for all of those of you that are on time. I like to give a personal shout out to all of those on, on time. Amen. Woman of God, Brenda Hawkins. Amen. Part of our Minister's Conference. Minister's Conference there in East Feliciana Parish. Sister Vicki Patterson. God bless you. Sister Paula Reed. Amen. All of you who are on time. Also by way of the prayer line <clears throat> this morning. Grateful to God for all of you that are on time. Um, it, it really, it means a lot uh, when you're on time. Amen. I see Lady King chiming in. Amen. My wife. Amen. Uh, in the house this morning. Thank God she's able to be in the house uh, with us this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. Listen, listen, y'all. We're in the midst of an awesome series. My God. We are in the midst. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, we're in the midst. Uh, we're in the midst, Brother Fred. We're in the midst of an awesome series entitled, When God Says Wait. When God Says Wait. Amen. We're getting ready to pray. All heads are bowed, all eyes are closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We give you honor, glory, and praise simply for who you are. If you don't do anything else, God, you've already done enough. And we thank you, Lord God. We give you praise today. Thank you for watching over us all night and giving your angels charge over our bodies and our homes, families, God, community, neighborhoods. And Lord, this morning, some way, somehow, by your spirit, you touched us. And we woke up, our eyes opened. Lord, it's nothing that we did to cause them to open. It's what you did. You spoke by your spirit and said, wake up, my child. We thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Not because we've been so good or kept your commandments so perfectly well. Lord, we missed the mark so many times. 
but you still woke us up and we said thank you sir much obliged god oh lord we thank you lord we thank you jesus and now god as we're assembled here in this church we pray that you would go with us this morning lead us and guide us by your spirit we don't want to say or do anything that you, that you don't command us to do so lord in jesus name we thank you and we love you we honor you we extol you we invoke thy presence now we need you now in the name of jesus lord look upon those who are sick this morning in their bodies and in their mind touch right now look upon those god in the lake charles louisiana area who are still recovering god look upon those on the west coast oh god dealing with wildfires oh speak a word god speak a word god in the name of jesus just one word from you makes everything all right and lord we thank you now we lift up this nation before you god that you will look upon this nation in Jesus name. Amen. All right, everybody shout amen with a loud voice. Shout amen with a loud voice. Amen. When God says wait now, we're going to dive into our lesson. This is part 3. This is part 3 um, of this particular series uh, our, our foundational passage of course, Psalm 27. We don't always go back and read that. Um, during our live broadcast on worship service, Psalm number 27, in particular, verses 13 and 14. In particular. Somebody say, in particular. <laughs> Amen. I keep telling y'all I know a couple of big words. Amen. <laughs> in particular. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Psalm number 27. Bishop Douglas Hardy in the house. Love you, man. That's my big brother. Good morning to you, Bishop. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. He pretty much raised me, y'all. Pretty much. <laughs> Magmanus. Amen. M Town in the house. Amen. Verse 14 um, uh, there. I'm sorry. Verse, um, what I said, 13 and 14 <clears throat> in particular, uh, as we have been dealing with. Uh, when God says wait, uh, Holy Spirit uh, has already identified Sister Kathy, amen, amen, my big sister, Sister Kathy there in the Dallas area, love you in the Lord, God bless you, in, you, you wrote it down, Sister Kathy, I see you in particular, amen, <laughs> praise God, pray Graham fam in the house, amen, listen, uh, we identified the fact that this is in fact the Psalm of David, um, those of us who are students of the word, we know uh, that David penned much of the psalm, but not all the psalm. Amen. Uh, David is similar to the Apostle Paul in regard to the New Testament. The Apostle Paul penned much of the New Testament, but not all of it. Uh, so here David, uh, David penned much of the writing of psalm, but not all of it. Amen. Uh, we can't give him credit for all, but we do give him credit for some. David here says, at the very end of this particular number 27 psalm, David said, wait on the Lord. <clears throat> David said, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. Now, the word courage means to be encouraged. All right? Now, we know that the word encouraged comes from the root word courage. And you just put an N on the front of it, E-N. Now, watch this. Watch this. In order to be encouraged, you must effectively exercise, watch this, the courage that's already in you. Y'all with me? Now, in order for you to exercise effectively the courage that's already in you, you first of all must have courage in you. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, in order for us to, here's my point, in order for us to effectively wait on God, knowing that he will sometimes say wait, right? In order for us to wait on God, we must have courage in order to wait on God. All right? Amen. We must have courage. Somebody say courage in what? Well, courage in God. Courage in the things of God. Courage in the word, the will, and the way of God. Write it down. We must have courage in the will, the word, and the way of God. 
Tell your neighbor God has a way. Oh, yes. God has a way. God has a way. God has a way. Mm. God has God has a way that you can't go over. God has a way that you can't go under. God has a way that you can't go around. You must. Yeah, I remember that. That's way back. <laughs> I think, sometimes I take you way back. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We must be. We must have courage in the word, the will, and the way of God. So the Paul to read. The word, the will, and the way of God. Right? All right? Now, when God says wait, that's exactly what he means. Isn't it amazing how that, uh, and you know, I, I tell you all the time, those of you that have been here simply the word for quite some time now, frequenting the church, uh, you've heard me say this over and over and over and over again, that the God we serve is a, a man. Uh, uh, he deals with uh, specification. He does not. He, he does not deal with generality. He's a very specific God, right? He's a very specific God. God does not uh, toss a blessing up in the air and say, "Whoever can catch it is yours." He doesn't do that. What God has for you is for you. What God has for me is for me. I don't want what God has for you because what God has for you has your name on it. Come on. It has already been arranged and orchestrated. Come on, talk to me. And designed and specifically shaped and molded just for you. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, just for, just for you. Now, you got to point at them when you talk. When you say they got to point at you, now don't point all up in their face. Now, folk get mad. Folk get mad when you put your finger in their face. <laughs> hey, yeah, you can't put your finger all up here now. Y'all go too far with that thing. Hey, Amen. <laughs> you got to bag up a little bit. Put it, you know, a little distance away and point at them. Hey, Amen. Just tell them, hey, Amen. What God has for you, baby, it's for you. See, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want what God has for you. Now watch this. Here's the thing that we need to really accept. Many times, what God has for us, he'll tell us to wait on it. We get ahead of God sometimes. You know, we get ahead of him. You know, just because you say, okay, now you, you, you made your plan. Uh, remember we talked last time in part two. This is part three, by the way. This is part three. Uh, we talked last time, I believe, about, I, I presented the analogy of um, uh, when we're in grade school, um, whether we're in the classroom, sometimes the teacher would say, um, you know, write down your short-term goals, write, term, write down your long-term goals. Short-term short -term generally is between one to three years or one to five years. That's generally short-term goal. Long-term goal, generally speaking now, generally speaking, long-term goal, five to ten years, Okay. Where do you see yourself? All right. Now, uh, you may be a junior or a senior in high school. Let's say a senior in high school, you're getting ready to graduate, go to the next level in your life. Amen. Whether it be college or the military, whatever. And, uh, and as a long-term goal, you might say, okay, by the age of 25, you got in your mind. By the age of 25, you're going to be happily married with one child living in a big house on the hill that's surrounded by a white picket fence and a little dog running around saying, bow wow, y'all missing me. Y'all miss, y'all just missed the preacher. You just missed it. Amen. Just missed it. You just missed it. Now that's what you want to do. <laughs> that's your plan. Come on. And, and, and when you are, are, are around the age of 24, you say, okay, I only got a year left to get this thing together. So whoever you with at the time, they ask you to get married. You say, yes, I do. I will. Will you marry me? Yes, I will. Well, have you prayed about it? That's my first question. Have you talked to God? Come on, talk to me. Sometimes God will say, wait. Because oftentimes, when, what we want to do, when we want to do it, where we want to do it, how we want to do it, amen, and what way we want to receive it, it may or may not be God's plan 
four hour live. Watch this here at that time. Woo! At that time. Don't miss that. At that time. Amen. So we need to learn how to listen to God, follow Him. Amen. And, and, and um, rather than trying to figure out a specific course of action um, um, for our lives. Amen. 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 Let, 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 let God do the leading. Let God do the guiding and the directing. Amen. We must, um, uh, we must make it a habit of listening to God mm. and obeying Him. Amen. That, for His direction. Amen. You know how uh, I'm a big movie. I'm a big movie. Buff. I love movies. You know, man, I love a good movie. Goodness, I love a good. I mean, it's got to be a good one now. Don't recommend a movie to me. <laughs> it ain't good. It's got to be good from front to back. Amen. It's got to be good. And, um, and, and you know, you think about a movie, every movie has a director. Y'all see where I'm going. I believe somebody see where I'm going. I believe it. I really believe somebody see where I'm going. Every movie you watch on television, or every movie did, has a director. What does a director do? Come on, talk to me. <laughs> Tell the people what to do, how to do, and when to do. That's it. You ain't got to dress it up. That's what a director does. A director tells the people what to do, how to do, when to do. Simple. So if we're going to trust God to be our director, amen, we got to trust God to tell us what to do. Tell us how to do, and here's the thing, tell us when to do. See, when is so important. When. Somebody write it down. W, not W-I-N. That's a whole nother level. That's another teaching now. <laughs> W-I-N, when. That's a good when to know now. That's a good when to be familiar with, but we're talking about W-H-E-N, amen, which specifically deals with timing. Mercy. Deals with what? Deals with timing. Amen. We're talking about God. Talking about when God say wait. That's that's timing. That's the timing of God. Big brother Oscar Davis. Amen. That's the timing of God. Shadow witness in here. Amen. Amen. And so so God has promised us, y'all. God has promised us never to leave us nor forsake us. He promised us to be with us, uh, just as He promised Joshua. After uh, the death of Moses, post Moses, say it like that, post Moses, uh, God, if you look at Joshua chapter 1, we've touched on this before, you look at Joshua chapter 1, in the early verses, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all that, you look at that when you get a chance, now write that down, um, you can see, you'll be quick able to see how God um, uh, reassured Joshua uh, then it's your time now. It's your time. It's your time. Amen. It's your time now. Amen. Amen. And because in essence, what God is so much in that you got to really, really dig deep. Uh, amen. And and when you dig deep, you would discover uh, that that in essence, one of the things that God was saying unto Joshua was this. Uh, watch this here. Since you did not get ahead of Moses, and since you did not get ahead of me. Y'all, y'all, y'all with me? Hey, amen. Since, since you did not, since you did not uh, uh, get ahead of Moses, and since you did not get ahead of me, not, not listen because I told you to wait back then, but now it's your time. It's your time now. See, we can't get ahead of God. We can't get it. That's what David is saying in the text. David is saying in verse fourteen, "Wait on the Lord." Now, here's the problem with a lot of people: we don't have. We don't really have a serious issue waiting on other people. Amen. We'll wait on some folk. Come on, talk to me. But we won't wait on God. Amen. You know I'm telling the truth. You know I'm telling the truth. You know, you know I'm telling the truth under some of the worst con 
tradition. I can re remember, I think I mentioned, may have mentioned this to you all some time ago, um, Grambling State was playing uh, Alcorn State uh, in, in a football game in Shreveport, Louisiana. Sister Kathy, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and uh, my family and I went up to Shreveport for the game, Independence Stadium, never forget it. The sky opened up. I mean, it rained the whole game. What did we do? We sat right there in, that, in the stands in all of that rain. Come on, waiting. Y'all, y'all, there's a word. Waiting. Come on, waiting for them. We weren't going to leave till the game was over. Amen. Didn't care how long it took. Didn't, they they could have played six hours. We would have been right there. Amen. Why is it that we are not willing to wait on God? Amen. Well, let's talk about some requirements. We're getting ready to get real deep here now. This is part three. You know, by the time we make the part three, we're really, really deep into the lesson. We're really, really deep. In. Part one is, you know, kind of the introduction. We're just kind of freelancing, talking a little bit, kind of setting the stage. Part two, we dig into the text a little, kind of scrape the surface, uh, get, get in there a little bit, get our feet wet in the text. And my God, by the time by the time we get to part three, which is where we are now, we are fully loaded, ready to rock and roll in the lesson. Let's let's talk about um, some of the requirements. Now we make up our mind. We we already talked about how important it is to wait on God. We know God will says God will say wait. God will. We know John four and twenty four. God is a spirit. We didn't worship him, must worship him in spirit and truth. So, so we know God is a spirit. God speaks to us by his spirit. The Holy Spirit, this is just elementary stuff we're just throwing out real quick. We're trying to get to what we, the requirements. We know that God is a spirit. The Holy Spirit is down here with us, right? When Jesus left, y'all remember? Jesus was crucified, amen, and, and, and laid in a tomb. Three days later, he got up, right, with all power in his hand. Come on now. You got to believe that. <laughs> Amen. And then uh, he hung around for about 40 days. Is that right? Am I in the Bible? Somebody said you're in the Bible preaching. Amen. And and a whole lot of stuff happened during the time frame of those 40, uh, some odd 40 days that he was here. And um, amen. And, and then... Uh, he ascended back to God, which means he went up. Ascend means to go up. He went back. Uh, descend mean come down. He, he ascended back to God, right? To sit at the right hand of the Father, which is where he is now. Now, once he made it back, he sent the Holy Spirit to represent. Come on. Amen. They're one and the same, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit, that's what that's that's where we are now. Holy Spirit is still here with us. Leading us, guiding us, and comforting us. Right? Into all truths. Thank you, Sister Barb. Sister Barb said you in the Bible. Thank you. Now, if Sister Barb said I'm in the Bible, that means I'm in the Bible. Because <laughs> you're a student of the Word of God. Amen. So I'm in, I know him, I feel better now. Hey, somebody know him in the mind. Amen. So we're talking about the what? The requirements for waiting on God. You can't just say you're going to wait on God and you don't know what you need in order to wait on him. <laughs> Ooh, woo. It, it, amen. In other words, you don't possess what's the necessary ingredient. Come on. In order to wait on God. Now, it's one thing to say you're going to wait on, but do what you have, do you have what is necessary? <laughs> Woo! Oh, Bishop Douglas Hart, I don't know if you're still here, man. I know you stuck your head in the, <clears throat> in the door a few minutes ago, but uh, I remember this song, and you were the first one um, years ago. Yeah, I don't know if I ever told you that. I think I have told you this. Uh, that I heard sing this song, and um, and it blessed me. And I used to try to sing it sometimes. You've been waiting on a blessing, and it just won't come. Woo. Times are rough, life is tough, 
And it seems you're done. But the devil, <laughs> woo, you got to believe it. He's a liar and a deceiver too. God is not through blessing you. Oh, God is not through blessing you. trust God, you must first understand who God is. In order to trust God, you must first understand who God is. Somebody say, okay, who is he? Well, that's a good question. That's not a bad question. He's God Jehovah. Lord have mercy. Mm, Elohim. He's, he's, he's Jehovah Rapha. My provider. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's, he's the one that stepped back. The old preacher said, he stepped back from behind a million midnights and said, let there be light. <laughs> boy, the old preacher had a way of putting things together, boy. I'll tell you, I said, God, dog, man. All I do is shake my head and say, good God Almighty, amen. He said, he stepped back from behind a million midnights <clears throat> and said, let there be light. Do y'all hear me? Number one thing, number one requirement, before anything else, you must have trust. In order to trust God, we must know who God is. In order to trust God, we must know that his timing is right. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. His timing is, is right. Amen. Also, in order to trust God, we must keep in mind that God, God is not depriving us of anything. Sometimes, don't get caught up in that, y'all. Let me throw this in for free. Let me put the kickstand down for a moment. And we're going to park right here. We're going to park right here. Amen. For a moment. Let me say this to you, to the body of Christ. Don't get caught up in comparing yourself with other people. Because I'm going to tell you what's, what would happen if you do that. Then the, the enemy will whisper in your ear and tell you that you should have what they have. God is depriving you of something. So why are you serving a God who will deprive you of something? Come on. Why are you serving a God who will deprive you of that which you rightly deserve? Well, I have news for you. Amen. God knows what I need and God will give me what I need. Right when I need it. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible said, every good and perfect gift come from above. Don't know about you. Made up my mind a long time ago. Wait on God. Now, I was transparent with you all last time during part two. Don't have time to go into it now, but 
but I was transparent. I, I think I gave y'all at least one, maybe two um, real life examples personally for me. Amen. Yeah, just just straight. I mean, you know that y'all know me. I'm straight, you know. And I gave y'all I gave I gave y'all some real life examples, true stories of a couple of things. At least one I know that I gave you. Um, uh, the, the, what happened in my some a couple of things that happened in my life in the past. Whereas I did not wait on God, I got ahead of God, and I realized later uh, that I should have waited on Him. Amen. And now don't look at me funny because because you too, you have you all of us have gotten ahead of God at some point. Amen. Now you didn't just come out the womb obeying God and waiting on God. <laughs> come on now, Amen. Some folks want you to believe that though. Let me, let me say that. Some folks want you to believe. Some folks want you to believe that they came out of the womb obeying God. <laughs> Amen. But they're telling a lie. Amen. They are lying and the truth is not in them. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's a process, you know. It's a process. And um and um and 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 uh, we can't look down on people, you know, uh, if they are not where we are. Come on, you, you haven't always been where you are. I know you all that in a bag of chips today. I know, and a cold, <laughs> a soda on the side. And <laughs> I know, I know you all that bag of chips and a pickle and all that stuff on the side. I know, but you haven't always been that in God. Hello, Amen. Come on. Come on. Let, let's not let the Lord read your script now. <laughs> Amen. I wish I had a witness. Amen. So we must be patient with people. Amen. You may be at a place where in your life where you're able to wait on God. Amen. Uh, at a faster rate than someone else. Johnny down the street. And, um, and you know, don't, don't look at Johnny all under eyed and stuff now. You know, pray for him. Amen. Pray for Johnny. Come on. Type that in. Sister Vicki Patterson. So the big, <laughs> so the big power write that in. Type that in. Pray for Johnny. All right. So it's the Barb. I want you to type in. Pray for Sally. All right. Y'all know those are the two names I use the most uh, when I'm referring to a man. I most commonly I use uh, Johnny. Amen. When I'm referring to a female, I use Sally. Amen. So there you go. Pray for pray for Sally, and then we're gonna pray for Johnny. Amen. We can't look down on people. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. Just because someone is not where you are in God. Sister, Sister Carol said, I'm going to fix all y'all. Sister Carol said, pray for Johnny and Sally. That's what I'm talking about. I like that, Sister Carol. Amen. Sister Carol said, pray, pray for both of them. Hallelujah. Woo! God is good. serve a God who is able. And he'll tell you, sometimes he'll tell you to wait. I'm telling you now. Sometimes he'll tell you to wait. Amen. David said in the B portion of this verse number 14, David said and he shall strengthen thine heart. Amen. He shall strengthen thine heart. Now, David knows what he's talking about because he's speaking from experience. So when you've been through something, man, you can tell the story. My God. That's why I, 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 love, I love testimonies. I love testimonies. I love testifying. Testifying services and that type of thing. Because, because another, another person's testimony will help strengthen me. Come on. And my testimony ought to help strengthen you. Tell your neighbor we're in this together. Tell your neighbor we're in this together. Now when you say we're in this together, you got to do your hand like that. Say, neighbor, we're in this together. You're on Facebook. I want you to do that now. One, two, three. Say, we, we, do your hand like this, Facebook people. Say, we're in this together. We, if, amen. We're in this together. Tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, we're in it together. Amen. 
encourage a neighbor sometimes. And he shall, he shall strengthen your heart. When you think about, when you think about when Jesus was in the garden, just before he was taken into custody by the Roman soldiers, um, remember he was there with his disciples and he had kind of walked away from them. Y'all remember? And uh, went over on his own to himself. He did that a lot. He did that quite often. Amen. He, he would leave them at a certain point and he would say, okay, now y'all stay here. I'm going over here to pray. Y'all just, y'all can't go with me now. <laughs> you, you know, you, you know, you, 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 you come as far as you can right now. So just stay here and I'm going over here and I'm going to pray. I need to talk. I need to get somewhere with God right quick. Amen. And so he did that. And uh, after he had his personal encounter with God, after he had his personal encounter with God, um, one of the things that he did, amen, uh, he was strengthened, amen, he was strengthened by, by God, amen, he was strengthened by God, and we need to know that, we need to know that if Jesus, watch this here, if Jesus, uh, uh, amen, allowed himself to be strengthened by God, we too, we too must allow ourselves to be strengthened by the Lord. All right? Okay? And so David said, when you wait on him, be of good courage, then he'll strengthen your heart. Even um, Matthew chapter 7, verse number 7, uh, when Jesus was teaching and Jesus said, uh, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find knocking the door shall be open unto you. Now, that is the door of prayer and promise and purpose. Write that down. When Jesus said, knock and the door shall be open, uh, somebody said, what door? The door of prayer, promise, and purpose. Write those three Ps down. The door of prayer, promise, and purpose. The door of prayer, promise, and purpose. You got it? Amen. Amen. The door of prayer, promise, and purpose. And oft times, come on somebody, amen, the purpose of God is for you and I to wait on God. That's what I'm trying to get to right there. Oft times, the purpose of God is for you and I to wait on God. All right, prayer line, I pray y'all are writing. I know Facebook working good this morning. Facebook doing good. Good class. Facebook, y'all a good class this morning. Good. Well, most times y'all are anyway, but y'all a real good class this morning. Prayer line, don't let me down. Most of all, don't let God down. <laughs> Amen. Take good notes. I believe in taking notes, man. I believe in, I believe in being a student of the word of God. I believe in that. I, and I got scripture to back me up. Paul said to his son, Timothy, study. Steady. Steady. To show thyself approved. A workman. Amen. A workman that need not be ashamed. One that is able to rightly divide the word of truth. If you, amen, if you're going to be able to, if you really want to rightly divide the word of truth, which is the word of God, which is the Bible. Amen. If you really want to be able to do that, if you really want to do that, amen, you must study the word of God. You must be a student of the word of God. Come on. In order to receive the divine revelation um, of God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And so, uh, brothers and sisters, I do want uh, us to be encouraged in this lesson because this is a lesson. Now, 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 this is not a very, you know, this is not a very, one of those comfortable lessons, you know. This lesson is meant to make you uncomfortable. That's what I'm, there it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit. This lesson is meant to make us uncomfortable because nobody wants to wait on nobody. That's just the honest truth. Now, come on now. Let's be real. 
You told Sally, said, Sally, I'm going to be there at 5 o'clock, pick you up. Be ready now. Because we got, you know, we got a 45 minute drive and Sally, I need you to be ready. I'll be ready at 5 o'clock. I'm going to pull up in your driveway at 5 o'clock on the dock. You pull up, Sally don't come outside. <laughs> so you call Sally. Say, hey, babe, I'm letting you know it's 5 o'clock. Matter of fact, it's 5 now. I'm sitting out in the driveway. You, you, you on your way out? Well, well, hold, hold up, baby. Give, give, me, give me about five minutes. Amen. <laughs> so you, now, now you might not, amen. <clears throat> you might not, amen. You may not get ugly with Sally, which you should not anyway. I mean, never get ugly with people. Amen. Don't do that. That's not godly. Uh, you, you might not say nothing mean or nasty, but just tell the truth. In your mind, in your mind, you're saying, my, no, my goodness. I told her five o'clock. Come on, somebody. No lie on the way. Woo. I told y'all some time ago, one of my pet peeves. One of my pet peeves. I've gotten better. I've gotten better. Amen. I've gotten better. <laughs> I don't like to stand in long lines. I don't like it. Man, I don't like that. Amen. I don't like that. No, indeed. My God, my God. Woo, woo. I don't like it. But I've gotten better. Somebody's been praying for me. <laughs> now, I'm, you know, I consider myself a person of patience. You know, generally speaking, I'm a person of patience. But, but to stand in a long line, my, especially on top of that, when the folk ahead of you messing around. The line trying to move and they on their phone and they not paying attention. And I'll be wanting to say, baby, please walk up. I'm trying to get out of here. Come on, help me somebody. Listen, y'all, we got to learn how to wait. Got to learn how to wait. Number two, number one, I hope you wrote that down. Number one thing you need is trust. Here it is. We're leading right in. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Number two, patience. Number two thing we need is patience. Psalm 37, of course we in 27, but Psalm 37, verse 7 says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently on Him. Amen. Rest in God and wait patiently. We're almost through. Our time is running out. Amen. We ought never become overly anxious. We ought never become impatient because it seems like God is not doing anything. Sometimes it will seem like that. But I came to tell you God is always moving, God is always working, God is always speaking. Write that down. God is always moving, God is always working, God is always speaking. <laughs> Write that down. God is always moving. God is always working. God is always speaking. Did you write that down? You're not writing. <laughs> Somebody said, how you know? I can see through the phone. I... <laughs> You're not writing. God is always moving. God is always working. God is always speaking. All right? Theologians declare uh, the years between the Old Testament ending and the New, New Testament beginning, uh, beginning uh, were somewhere around approximately three to four hundred years. All right, in between that, and some theologians declare they call those years the dead years, quote unquote, the dead years. When you do your study, they call those years the dead years. All right. And the reason why they refer to your, those years as the dead years is because seemingly, watch this, I, I, I'm very careful with my words, seemingly not much was going on, amen, seemingly God was not speaking, God was not moving, God was not working in the lives of his people. Seemingly, God was being quiet. Woo. 
when you study the dead years, okay, theologians declare, I'm not a theologian, I'm just, just preaching. <laughs> theologians declare that, amen, uh, that, that not much was happening. Not much was happening. Amen. Praise God. Because, because seemingly, here it is, throughout, uh, amen, the period, uh, whereas the major prophets and the minor prophets and all of that is going on, uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Daniel, Jose, all those guys, uh, God was speaking through those guys to the people. Even Malachi. Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament. But we don't like Malachi because <laughs> we really don't like him, do we? We don't tell the truth. Y'all don't like Malachi. Y'all know you just sitting there. Don't act funny. You don't like Malachi because Malachi tell you to give. <laughs> Third chapter of Malachi. Bring the tithes. Whoa! To the storehouse. Hallelujah. That there may be meat in mine house. Prove me wherewith. Check it for yourself when you got some time. Saith the Lord of hosts. Ha! Then I will open up the windows of heaven. Woo! Pour your blessing. But you will not have room to receive. Brothers and sisters. You know, and he goes on saying that, you know, I, this, God says, God says, I will rebuke the devourer for, for, for your sake. Other words, when the enemy come up against you, that's what God means when he says that, rebuke the devourer. He said, now, when the enemy attack you, you ain't got to worry about nothing. When the devil attack your finances, when the devil attack your health, come on, your family, Y'all missing me. Let me close out. Amen. So, so we don't, just tell the truth, we don't really like Malachi. We don't, we don't like that fella, do we? <laughs> we don't like that fella. Amen. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. But, you know, after that book, the Malachi being the last book in the Old Testament, um, And, and then, of course, uh, the New Testament beginning with Matthew, and, um, and, and we see the manifestation of the Son of God, Jesus the Christ. Now, you got to keep in mind, gee, now, now we, see, we see the manifestation, we mean that, we mean that Jesus, amen, uh, the, the, the birth of Christ and all of that, and you know how I mean, you know, look at Matthew. Matthew begins with talking about the genealogies of Jesus, the 42 uh, generations that came down through 40 and 2. When they say 40 and 2, that means 40 plus 2, 42 generations he came down through. And then there was Jesus. Amen. And so he talks about all of that. Matthew was led by the Holy Spirit to deal with all of those generations that came before Jesus. And then he, he just slid right into Jesus, talking about uh, how, how the birth of Christ, Mary and Joseph and all of that, right? Okay, but you got to keep in mind that Jesus was here from the very beginning. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Jesus, all three, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit existed from the beginning. Because if God existed, come on, talk to me. Mm. And all three are one. I got scripture, don't mess with me on a Tuesday. That's the wrong day of the week to mess with me. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> we get ready to go, y'all. We're having a good time in this lesson. This is an awesome lesson. We're dealing with the number two thing you need. Um, number two, uh, praise God, requirement. That's the word. We want you to keep that word before you require. So we're requiring it. Now, what is a requirement? A, re a requirement is something that you must have. You know, you, you, it's, not, it's not an option, right? It's a requirement. You go in for a job, you for the application, you fill out the application, you say now, so one of the requirements, they tell you, you go, let's say you go in for an interview, right? And um, 
you sit across the desk from the person interviewing the person that's interviewing you, and one of the things that they will say during the interview is they will say, "Well, Mr. So and So or Miss So and So, um, here are the requirements for this position, right?" And and they'll just run them down. Might be three, four, five things they run down, and they'll say, "Now, do you have? Do you possess all of these?" Watch this here. One of them might be a high school diploma, uh, you know, just on down the line or, or GED equivalent, whatever. Then another one might be five years experience in this field. Y'all missing me. I'm trying to make it plain. Ooh. Another one might be that you have never been convicted of a felony. Come on. And they say, and then I say, then they say, do you have all these? <laughs> now don't sit there and lie to the people because they're going to come back on you now when they do the research. Come on. They're going to do the background check. Woo. Lord have mercy. Yeah. They're going to do a background check. Come on, talk to me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, just be honest. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, be honest. Come on, help me, y'all. Just be honest. I wish I had a witness. We're getting ready to go. Time to We're going to stick a pin there. Matter of fact, it's 9 0 what? Somebody tell me. 9 0 7, maybe. Okay. We're going to stick a pin right there. And um, praise God. We are going to, we're going to move fast with this, y'all. We're going to move fast with this. Any testimonies, type of me in Facebook. Um, any testimonies, uh, you can text me or, uh, we gotta do it. We gotta do it fast. We gotta, we gotta do it real fast. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Uh, if you want to, if you're led by God, I always say that a testimony should be led by the spirit of the Lord, not just because people expecting you to testify. You know, we have testify service in local church <clears throat> and on third Sunday. And um, and that's one of the things that 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 we emphasize uh, is that uh, a man uh, testimony can be given at any time. A man, not just on that particular day, <laughs> you know, hey, but it, it, of course, it had to be done decent and in order. It's a way to do everything. You know, it's a way you don't just start blurting out stuff. It's a way to do stuff. But. But uh, uh, it should be, the bottom line, it should be led by the Spirit of God. Who's to say that, that you're going to make it to the third Sunday of that particular day? Who's to say that somebody in the house doesn't need your testimony today? Well, uh, depending on what they're going through. Amen. Praise. We're going to lift up Cheryl Patterson is in the ICU, the kidney failure. Praise God. Amen. we got a couple things we need to do now. Also, at the same time, birthdays, 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 wedding anniversaries. Type of man we want to celebrate with you. Birthdays. You are your immediate family. You are your immediate family. You can text that in to me or Sister Carolyn. Sister Carolyn, the type. If you text it to her, she can type it in on Facebook. Amen. 504-453-7995. I think I got that right. 504-453-7995. Okay. If you text it to her. She can prayer requests or birthdays. Um, There's a whole lot of ways we can do this. Amen. That's one way you can do it. You can text it to her. You can type it. If you're on Facebook yourself, type it in. All right. Gabby Smith, birthday tomorrow. All right. Praise God. All right. Sister Carla, get ready. We're going to ask you to bless us as we always do. we got to go to Sister Carla in a minute. And we got to go to, um, to Sister Carolyn as well. Uh, in a minute. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Evangelist Tanya Harrell, bless you, woman of God. We're lifting up Johnny Lanier for surgery tomorrow. And your birthday Friday, woman of God. Evangelist Tanya Harrell, Hammond, Louisiana. Birthday is Friday. All right. Happy birthday to you. And also lifting up Johnny Lanier for surgery. All right. Kidney failure, Cheryl Patterson is the ICU. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. All right. 
Um, testimony. All right, coming in from Sister Boss. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, recognize the death of Sister Ruby Dixon. So we're lifting up our family. That's my family. It's my cousin. And New Charleston Baptist Church Deaconess. Also my wife's, um, while I'm thinking about it, um, my wife's uncle passed away. That is um, my father-in-law's brother. All right. Uh, brother, uh, we, we call him Uncle Smokey. Oh, my God. Leon. Leon. <laughs> Amen. Uh, brother Leon Spears. He's the twin brother to Leroy Spears, right? But Leon has passed away, and um, his funeral will be Saturday with the viewing Friday night at the funeral home. Okay? In Richmond Funeral Home. All right? So we get all that out. Also, birthday, uh, Minister Lorraine Gibson is today. Right, Minister Lorraine Gibson is today. Birthday. Happy birthday to you, woman of God. All right. So we're getting ready now. Hey, Amen. I believe we got just about everything in. Praise God. And we want to go ahead now and yield to Sister Carla Evans. Come on and bless us, woman. Also add Roy McKnight's birthday to that today. It's on today. Amen. All right. Bless you. Happy, 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 happy birthday. Happy, 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 happy birthday. Happy, 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 happy birthday, cause children. Happy, 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 happy birthday. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Happy, 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 happy birthday. Happy birthday, prayer warriors. God loves you. Simply the Word Ministry loves you too. Happy, happy birthday wishes you many more birthdays to come in life. Happy birthday. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Carla Evans, McManus. Louisiana, we're getting ready to take a trip down I-10 traveling east. I-10, Interstate I-10 traveling east, and we're going to arrive there. Amen. In the New Orleans area, Sister Carolyn Collin. Debo's in the house. Good morning, good morning, good morning, my prayer warriors. To God be the glory. We are so glad to have you in our midst this morning. You're always invited to participate with Simply the Word Ministry through our prayer line and Facebook page. We ask that you look at the comment section if you're on Facebook. I've listed all of the ways in which you can give. We have Cash App for Simply the Word Ministry, the Stuart Baptist Church, Hickory Grove, MBC, and Buckbeak Glen King. All of those are ways to do cash out. We also have text to give with the Grove at 99000 and McEwen at the same, M-E-K-O-W-E-N. Very easy ways and secure ways to give. For those of us who would like to pay online, we have giving online at www.swm.web.com. So let's see. We have snail mail. That's if you want to send a check or money order. Simply the word ministry at post office box 166 BS Louisiana 70727. That's Denham Springs, Louisiana 70727. Secret Grove is Post Office Box 1721, Jackson, Louisiana, 70748, and McEwen Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1481, Jackson, Louisiana, 70748. 
we'd like to remind you of our 62nd National Prayer Call at 12 o'clock each day Central Standard Time on our prayer line. That's 206 279-9125, press in code 562-160 We're here every Tuesday and Friday morning at 8.15 Central Standard Time for one hour of our Bible teaching under the auspice of our pastor, Reverend Burnett G. King, Sr., in Springs, Louisiana, every Wednesday at 12 o'clock high noon, one hour of power, and once again at 6.15. There, our Hickory Grove Mature Baptist Church Facebook page. Should you need any of this information, you can always contact me at 504-453-7995. Our yearly fee is $220 in 2020. That's $220. This helps with our outreach ministry. We are here every Sunday morning. We have the broadcast. Uh, Heaven 1460 if you are in the local Baton Rouge area. If not, we can be reached on the web at Heaven. 1460.com from 10.30 to 11 o'clock every Sunday morning. Please, please join us and hear a word from God. Don't forget our prayer request line. If you have a prayer request, please text that to me. You can also go on our Accept the Word page and leave that information. Once again, my number is 504-453-7995, and Dr. Burnett G. King's number is 225-202-8431. Our prayer is that God will take you to bless and keep you in his loving care, and we look forward to seeing you back on the prayer line at 12 o'clock high noon. For our 62nd National Prayer Call. Now back into the hands of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Burnett G. King, Sr., Denham Springs, Louisiana. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. <laughs> Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of the Lord. Power in the name of Jesus. No other name I know. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Sister Carolyn Debos, New Orleans. Thank you, Sister Carla Evans. Sister Carla McManus, Louisiana. I want to say to Sister Wanda Charles, um, Vallejo, California, out on the West Coast. We love you. We're praying for you and your family. Uh, hey, we don't know what you're going through, so we're not gonna we're not gonna sit here and say that because we're not there where where you are. Amen. As we're dealing with those wildfires um, in the San Francisco area, I think north of San Francisco and all that. That's not too far from you. I know. I know that you and Vallejo is in the northern area there in California. And um, uh, we're just thankful that it's not in your backyard. We're thankful for that. But we are certainly praying for um, all of those on the West Coast dealing with the wildfires. Amen. We, we thank God for our Dallas connection. Sister Frida uh, K. Ho Coleman Smith Hobbs. Amen. In the house. Our Dallas connection. We thank God for you and your crew there in Dallas, Sister Sharon Davis, all of them, Brother Fred, uh, Brother Oscar, Brother Cliff, Brother I.L., amen, all of those there. Uh, Sister Carolyn Caldwell, I believe one of y'all in Houston, amen, one of y'all in Houston, but we thank God also for our Houston connection, amen. Listen, we're not going to stop until we get prayer warriors in every state. All 50 states. We got to get it. Come on. 
Y'all know somebody in North Dakota, call them. <laughs> you know you you know you know somebody in South Dakota. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Share this ministry with them. Get them on board. We're getting ready to go. We're lifting up all bereaved families, dealing with sickness, dealing with death. Uh, in particular, deaths, those that are, amen, dealing with those that tested positive COVID-19, coronavirus. We're believing God for vaccine, believing God for direction, uh, believing God for healing, complete healing. Amen. Uh, and all of that, <clears throat> uh, be sure now, tomorrow, let me say this, we're going to say it again tomorrow. Tomorrow is the deadline for the census, September 30th. Yeah, today is the 29th. September 30th is tomorrow. It's the deadline nationally for the census. Be sure you've completed it. Be very, be very sure you've done that. It's so, so very important. Also, October 5th, I believe, is the deadline to register to vote. We have to vote. Our voice is our vote. Amen. Don't just register. Step number one is to register. Step number two is to go to vote. Okay, step number two is going for early voting is October 16th through the 20th something. Okay, we'll give you that exact date on the on the backside, but I think the first date, first date of early voting is October 16th. Amen. We have a huge campaign we plan for our parish, East Feliciana, uh, for that Saturday where we're going to all go in early vote together. Amen. We're going to bombard the registrar's office. On that Saturday, they better be ready because we're on the way. Amen. Make sure the staff is in place because we're coming and we're coming to vote on. I think it's October 24th or 25th, whatever that Saturday is that falls in there uh, in early vote. Amen. We're gonna meet at the Saint Mark Baptist Church, passed by Joseph Washington, that morning, and we are going to the registrar's office. So if y'all listening, register the office. Each police channel registers off. If you're listening, get ready. Get your staff in place because we're on the way. <laughs> we're ready to cast our vote. Amen. People dying so we can vote. We're going to vote. It's one thing we're going to do. We're going to vote. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Pray, I pray you feel the same way that I feel. Amen about that. Amen. Now listen. Tomorrow 12 high noon, get ready to go. Try to talk fast to get you out of here. Tomorrow 12 high noon, meet me right back here. Prayer line and Facebook tomorrow, every Wednesday, 12 high noon. And we will also, of course, we begin with our 60-second national prayer call and we'll slide right into our uh, our power teaching. Praise God. Then on tomorrow evening, we have our regular Bible teaching. Uh, keep in prayer. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Keep in prayer, Deacon Ray and Sister Ruby, uh, who have been in and out of doctor's offices and urgent cares and all that stuff. And uh, just trying to get straight, amen. These bodies of ours, if we, we stay here long enough, amen, we're going to have some issues. And it's just a blessing to be here, amen. So don't complain. I want to say this to everybody. Uh, let's, not, let's not complain, uh, amen, uh, when, when our bodies are aching and all of that. Somebody died and they don't, have a, they don't have the opportunity to have an aching body. Come on, somebody died in their sleep, but you woke up. So we thank God for that. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Getting ready to let you go. Love you in the Lord. And there is nothing that you can do about it. If you meet me and forget me, it's okay. But if you meet Jesus and then forget him, you've missed out on something. What is it? I unmuted. One more time. What is it? Bless you. Love you all. Love you I hear you, Mother Chris. We're praying for you, Mother Chris. Brother Ennis, we're praying for you. Thank you so much, every individual. Thank you, prayer warriors and pastor. Your line has been disconnected by the moderator. Goodbye.